and welcome to the expert breakout sessions for the Cloud Architecture Summit. This is a session for Attunity, a division of Click, and we have with us Clive Berman, Director of Product Marketing for Data Integration at Click. Clive, welcome. Thanks, Vance. Thanks for having me back. Clive, we're really glad to have you here. Clive is Director of Product Marketing for Data Integration at Attunity, now a division of Click. He ensures big data, data link, and cloud migration success for a number of data and analytics companies. He is responsible for a variety of data-centric cloud initiatives, which will be on great display for us this morning. And he has 20 years experience, spans data management, integration, hybrid architectures, and now cloud. And as you may recall, earlier this spring, Intunity was acquired by Click, which offers end-to-end -end real time data integration and analytics solutions. We're going to take a look, in fact, in Clive's session at what he calls nine cloud and data trends to watch. Today, Clive is going to highlight for us some of the latest cloud trends that are making real impacts, optimization of more seamless and intelligent data delivery and consumption. You're going to learn where Fortune 500s are focusing their investment and efforts to drive innovation, and we'll even get a demo of the Attunity Click technology in action. And just a quick reminder before we hand it over to Clive, you could download his slides. Just click the big red button right under the view screen, and you'll see that they'll come right to you. No registration required. You did that to join us this morning. You'll also see some other great links to white papers and downloads also available the same way. And we encourage you to connect with Clive. He's got a lot of insight and information to share. So to connect with him, just use the submit a question box. And now with that, Clive, let me turn it back to you and tell us about nine cloud and data trends to watch. Thanks again, Vance. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, wherever you are. Yes, I'm going to talk about cloud and data market trends. Uh, I think it's an extremely exciting time. There's still a lot of innovation. Folks are still embracing cloud. And as we hurtle towards the end of the decade, I thought it might be a good idea to look at some of those trends and things to watch. Those things obviously create new and emerging requirements we should consider. I'll show how we can capture some of those things and fix some of those requirements in a demonstration. Also, I'll quickly cover Attunity and Click and the relationship there, and we'll finish with the summary and some next steps. So, on to those cloud and data market trends. Now, for those of us that have been in the cloud market for a while, it won't be any surprise that there continues to be massive adoption of cloud. If we think about it now, you know, it's something that's not new. Salesforce is 20 years old. Amazon Web Services is 13. I think Azure is getting on for 10. I think Google Cloud Platform's like 11. So they're certainly around, and I think certainly most of the customers that we come in contact with are all using cloud in some shape or form. So as I've said, AWS is probably still the leader. Microsoft and Google are coming up strong on the rails. And what are the concerns about this cloud trend? Data governance and security beyond just basic data integration. And sort of on the back of that, it's still a little rare. My second trend is about multi-cloud. It's rare, but not uncommon for enterprises now using a number of clouds. So especially in those larger enterprises where maybe different divisions might have standardized on a different public cloud platform. And so the concern there, besides the data governance and data security, is obviously still not just data integration between on-prem and the cloud, but between the different clouds themselves. My third trend, streaming. So data streaming, has gone mainstream. Kafka here was invented at LinkedIn, and they used it as a, a sort of a replacement for their event bus, if you like. And then those guys, once they left LinkedIn, created a company called Confluent, and Confluent produced this software called Kafka. The main concern there, obviously, is data streaming and generation, and how do I hook up my legacy systems and my on-prem systems to new message buses? Of course, I've said Kafka there, but also if you use one of the public clouds, there's also Amazon Kinesis. We're seeing things like Azure Event Hubs and PubSub from Google Cloud Platform 2, as well as Kafka. Sort of along with that, data warehousing is making a comeback. Some folks would say it's never left, it's never gone away. But there's some real exciting trends in the cloud data warehouse market. So I mean things like Azure SQL DW, or in fact, I should say 
used to be that the only cloud data warehouse folks were talking to me about was Amazon Redshift. But recently we've seen Azure SQL DW, Google BigQuery, and Snowflake take the reins. And then there's a ton of interest around migrating my on-prem legacy data warehouse, whether that might be something like a Green Plum or Teradata or something like that, to use the elasticity and all of the flexibility of the cloud data warehouses. In the short term there, sort of the key concern is actually that data migration. In the longer term, we're seeing things like tooling. I've got new tooling there, but most folks are using the old tooling, ETL, to try and make their Snowflake data warehouse in the cloud. The issue with that sort of thing is ETL tools are not really invented for what we know as data warehouse automation. So there's still a lot of manual mapping and data migration to be done. So a sort of longer term goal there is to get some automation for data warehouses. Of course, data warehouses, if you like, took a bit of a sabbatical. That's why I said they're making a comeback because of Hadoop. It was all about big data and a new alternative to the on-prem data warehouse. And we had this Hadoop platform. Of course, in recent weeks, we've seen turbulence between Hortonworks, got a merged with Cloudera. Cloudera's had some executive turnover. We've seen MapR there having some challenges. And of course, I've got open source there as a keyword. If there's turbulent times with the companies that support Hadoop, then that's going to have a knock-on effect for the open source ecosystem around Hadoop as well. And also, we're sort of seeing right now is that Hadoop itself is a distributed data store, so based on a file system. And what we're seeing now is really a shift for data lakes, moving that flat file system into the cloud. And we're seeing things like Azure data lake services, the ADLS. We're seeing Google Cloud, for Google File. We're seeing even just plain old S3 become the default data lake. And also, that's a sort of shift in terminology or a shift in technology. We're also seeing the shift in terminology too. At a recent event that Attunity held, many folks were thinking data lake in a general term. So they weren't applying it specifically to Hadoop, but really everything to encompass their data platform. So they were like, well, yes, of course we have a data lake. With, it's a big database. So there's a shift in understanding of what the data lake is too. So I think the main sort of key concern with the trend here is that folks are worried about the lifespan of the particular technology that they've chosen. The next trend we're seeing is an emergence of new platforms. So not a data warehouse, not Hadoop. In fact, we're seeing new platforms like Databricks emerge, and that's kind of like a hybrid between Hadoop and maybe data sources and ETL. Again, it was a technology invented by the folks that really invented Hadoop. So the key concern as you adopt a new platform like that is, yes, this is, this is all well and good, but how do I operationalize that in my environment? How do I get my data in? How do I create my data pipelines for something like that? And of course, as I come into the home stretch of my trends here, AI and ML, I would be remiss without highlighting that. The hype for AI and ML is off the charts at the moment. So we're seeing folks use ML, in fact, machine learning, to replace, at the moment, things that used to be business rules. So, for example, the classic case for ML here is fraud detection, right? We used to have a lot of business rules around what data came into the business rule engine and what constitutes fraud. And, of course, that now is being replaced by the machine learning type algorithms where I train it with a set of sample data to get an answer out, you know, the probability in this instance that this transaction is fraudulent. So the key concern about that is how do I, not only feeding over from the last one, how do I operationalize that, but how do I train my system with good data in order to get the right outcomes? One that I 
feel remiss if I didn't say as a trend, we're also seeing a shift in not just the data integration markets, but BI and analytics as well. We've just seen Salesforce acquire Tableau. We've seen Google acquire Looker. So now the key concern around if I've chosen one of those visualization platforms is am I locked in with the whole stack of everything else? And a requirement might be to have something that's vendor neutral there. And then the last market trend is something that is very emerging at the moment is kind of like this idea of data ops as a discipline. So just like we've seen the revolution with DevOps, that agile method, agile tooling, CI, CD, workflow loop, we're seeing exactly the same happening in the world of cloud and data. So now it's not good enough just to have data base administrator be your font of knowledge around the data models, but also my end users and my end consumers need to know that too. But it would be really great if we could have the best practices from all of those fields combined as one. So I get that agility from the scrum kind of idea that we have with development and bring that into the data world for reporting and analytics. Whew. So that was a lot, right? So we can basically bucket all of those sort of trends into three macro categories, if you like, that have everything to do with cloud application development and migrating that data, whether on-prem or from a cloud, for new modernization initiatives. The second one, I think, is a category all on its own about data warehouse modernization. And the last one really is to do with next generation analytics, where I'm streaming the data, a continual update to systems for improved decision making and for those new initiatives like AI, ML, IoT, that sort of thing too. And of course, the requirements for all that across all of these three things is enterprise are getting greater agility, we're after elasticity and greater efficiencies. And not surprisingly, this is where our solution comes in, enabling data ops, if you like, for analytics, taking all of those legacy sources, creating a streaming data pipeline to replicate your data to databases, to create an automated data pipeline for data warehouses, to do that data warehouse migration. And of course, to offer a very similar thing, automate and make a streaming data pipeline for my data lake automation too. So we've got a full product portfolio to do that from Attunity Replicate, Data Lake Automation with Attunity Compose, Attunity Compose for data warehouses, and everything that you need to manage that on an enterprise-wide scale, the enterprise manager there too. So that's our difference. It's real-time data, giving data updated whenever you need it, seamlessly move that data from whatever source to whatever target, whether that be mainframes, relational, enterprise data warehouse, and we're going to do that across platform. And of course, the last thing is to make all of that as automated as possible, and that's where you'll get your productivity gain. So with that, I'm going to show a quick demonstration. I'm actually going to use the cloud to show you how that works. We've got a new innovation called the Attunity Replicate Test Drive. So I'm just going to show you data movement. There's nothing to download or install. You'll see it's all pre-configured and working in the cloud. It's using the current version of Attunity Replicate, so they'll create uh, containers and suck down the latest version and deploy it, oh, off you go. The Replicate test drive itself has those common usage patterns that we showed in the last slide, right, of database replication of database to Hadoop and database to streaming Kafka. You'll see it's very well documented, and that will live for four hours. So most folks can do the entire tutorial in about 90 minutes, but I'm only going to show you the very, very first bit. So with that, I've got a little demo here. So to get to the test drive, you click on the test drive link, you fill in the form, and press start test drive. And here's where it now starts to provision your environment in the cloud. So you'll see I'm deploying your test drive. For expediency's sake, I'm going to speed it up in a moment. There we go. Ta -da! Magically worked at 100%. So that'll take about five to seven minutes to provision. And then here we are. I'm now up and running with MySQL as my source 
and Postgres, Kafka, Hadoop as my targets. As I said, I'll show you how to do the very, very first example there. So again, nicely documented inline tutorial. I'm going to click on the link, which is dynamically generated. I'm going to put in the username and password to get into my product. And there we are. This is a Tunity Replicate up and running in the cloud. I'm going to do the first one, database replication. So I'm going to click on the link to get my details for the my source database target. Let me see now. I'm going to go down and look at my endpoint connection, all my details. Perfect. So I'm going to create a new endpoint connection, which is press new endpoint. I'm going to give that new endpoint a name. It can be anything you like. In this sense, I'm going to call it MySQL source. I've selected the button there as a source. I've selected it as MySQL. Oh, I've forgotten the server name, I think. What do I put in there? My SQL DB, I think, is, is the name of the server. The username and password is root. Here we go. The password is there. You'll see that in the instructions. And I'm going to turn off the security in this instance. There we go. Test it. And it is green, ready. Then I'm going to save that connection. And of course, the next thing is that's my source. I'm going to put it to my target, which is my Postgres. There we go, SQL Postgres DB port number. OK, so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to create a new endpoint. I'm going to do Postgres. I'm going to give it a name. This time, I'm going to choose the target instead of the source. And then I'm going to choose Postgres. You see all the other databases and data sources we have there. And my host name, which was Attunity. There we go. So I'm going to put that in. Oh, Postgres DB. 1S, Postgres DB. Attunity. There we go. Password in and the database name going in there quickly. Uh, what was it? Attunity, I think. Yep. There we go. Attunity. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to turn off security for the moment. and disable that, press test connection. And there we are, I've got my data source and my data target. And now I'm going to create a task to load data from the source to the target. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a name. Let's just call that simple replication for now. And press okay. And then I just simply drag and drop to configure my sources and my targets. And then the last step in this is really to decide what tables from my source I want to create in my target. Again, the software is clever enough to know and read the schema of the source table. I'm going to take all the tables. And it's also clever enough that it will create the tables if they don't exist in the target itself. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to run it. And then this is it all working. I'm going to start the task. And now here you see the data is flowing from my source to my target. And once the data has been loaded, it'll all settle down. And my throughput, there it goes, completed 100% and done. So again, that was a very, very quick demonstration of how to integrate or how to migrate your data from a source to a target, whether that's in the cloud or on-prem. So again, a Tuni Replicate, there was nothing to install. It was all pre-configured for you to play with. It's the current version, covers a whole bunch of other things that we mentioned in the trends that you're probably going to bump into. It's extremely well documented and it will self-destruct in four hours. So. I should be remiss that I need to really talk about Attunity and Click. So as Vance said, Attunity was, was acquired by Click in May. And we're all about sort of the democratization of data for greater insights and reporting to give you that agile data delivery, that real-time data for better insights, and it's trusted enterprise and data ready. So Click has a full portfolio 
of now data analytics and insight tools. And again, it's really that speed and efficiency from raw data to shared insight is our eventual vision. We are the, you know, if you like the blue triangle there, I've expanded that out. You've seen the data integration with change data capture through Toon D Replicate. You haven't seen data lake pipeline or warehouse automation. I'd love to show you that, but I didn't have time today. And again, the data prep and data ops sort of cataloging with profiling and lineage, again, is another part of the portfolio that unfortunately I couldn't share today. But that was a lot of stuff in a very short amount of time. So our summary and next steps. Really, the next phase of cloud and data markets is really going from batch to real-time data delivery. And the other thing is from slow, hand-coded, hard development to agile automation with tools like Attunity Replicate and Attunity Compose. So my next steps, register, try Attunity Replicate, test drive for yourself. The link there is also the link in the website you came to this presentation for. If you want to read more about Attunity and Click, then there's a statement of direction and download all the resources from today's webinar. There's a ton of stuff there you'll find extremely interesting. So with that, Vance, back to you. Well, I'm a little out of breath too, Clive. Fantastic session. Great review of some big trends. And who doesn't love a demo? So thanks very much. Great session. Thank you, Vance. Thanks very much. I really enjoyed it. It was a great overview of some of the big picture things going on, as well as what's going on with Attunity and now that they're part of Click. And as you might expect, we've got questions that span both. So if you're ready, let's get right to them. Certainly. What's interesting, Clive, is the timing. You know, here we are in summer of 2019. You talked about the big trends and certainly one of the other trends that you also referred to that's overlaying some of these technology trends is the business climate trends. I mean, certainly several years ago, the big platform companies were always the place to begin your conversation or your design thinking of what you're supposed to do to migrate your data or go into a hybrid or cloud environment with all the things going on with some of the major players. I wonder if people are rethinking that. And in that context, what do you see the biggest trends right now for customers and implementers you're talking to? That's a really good one. We have a lot of applications as an industry on things like SAP, Oracle, mainframe based that we can't just pick up and move. So that's where we step in and we will help you not only migrate that data, but if those legacy applications can't be moved, we're seeing folks still keep those mainframe apps, but use something like Attunity to build a data pipeline to keep that data up to date in whatever new application they have. So again, whether it's a warehouse, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's a new application that they've built and they're running that in a database in the cloud, or in fact, whether they're just trying something new like an AI or an ML project, whereby they've got another database somewhere that they want updated with their existing legacy data. Clive, it was fantastic. In fact, it's a great lead into this kind of use case question that came in. And it simply says, the speaker talked about modernizing enterprise data warehouse for cloud, and that's kind of what we're working on right now. What can the speaker recommend for either migrating to the cloud or using other ways to modernize or automate our existing data warehouse? You remember there was two things that I mentioned. There's a common pattern that we see where folks, when they're adopting something, say like a Snowflake or Redshift, just trying it. So folks will, when they just try, probably will try the data warehouse with a spreadsheet full of data, right? So I'm just going to use the existing tools that come with a Snowflake, and I'm just going to load that with data. The next thing that they'll move on to after that is maybe some sort of automated loading mechanism on some sort of batch time. So I'm going to say, well, I'm going to create my data warehouse, but I'm going to load it every night. And that's fine too. But we're seeing with the velocity of the data that's needed that you probably need real-time updates. So a change data capture technology from like Attunity will be very good at keeping the data warehouse updated as sort of as and when needed when transactions occur. So that takes care of the data update mechanism. I will just say that I started the talk saying it was a super exciting time, right? We're seeing 
still a massive amount of innovation in the cloud ecosystems with not just sort of databases now, but things like data catalogs. We're seeing things like ETL in the cloud. We're seeing things, each cloud has platforms and support for AI and ML in a whole host of different services. And Click wants to make it sure that we continue to invest a lot of time in supporting all of those major cloud platforms in however they might need or require data. You know, Clive, another quick comment on the idea of moving to the cloud. So many different vendors and so many different approaches to technology, and sometimes they're long-lasting. Sometimes they only go a year or so, and then it's on to the new one. Is there some level at which uh, Tunity, now that you're part of Click, can help me manage those relationships and actually kind of come to a point where you can partner with me to work with the other vendors or components I need to get to the cloud? Good question, Vance. Absolutely. So as you saw in the demo, whether you're using different source today and a different target tomorrow, we support pretty much everything within reason. And you saw me drag and drop, right? You pick from the checkbox, you're going to choose that data source and a different data target, a new task, and it's absolutely done. So it gives you that agility and that flexibility that even if you chose something as a data platform today with a tunity in the middle, we can help you get that data from where it is today to wherever you want it to go tomorrow. So we like to call those things architectures in motion. We can help you with those dynamic architectures that might be in motion from day one. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. In fact, just to kind of put a little cherry on top on this discussion, a question about your demo, Clive, and it goes to a lot of great features and automation in the Attunity demo. I wonder if the speaker could talk a little bit about what is the ramp up time for working with Attunity and what kind of skills do we need? It's not terribly difficult. Obviously, I'm not writing code, so I don't have to know Python or C or any language like that. I need to know pretty much what my data source is, my usernames and passwords, what my targets are. It's pretty intelligent to work out what the data structures are and what can get moved and the ramp up time. Well, I've got four hours as a test drive. Most people would do that in 90 minutes. I've had people do it in under that. So obviously that's my test drive demo there, but that's not something that I would roll out into production. But uh, just to get a flavor and see how it works is super easy and super quick. You know, Clive, I think we're just about out of time, but we can't let you go without giving us some glimpse into the future of what it's like now to be a member of the thriving Click community. Certainly a lot of folks on the user side and the consumption side are familiar with Click. not always at where the back-end magic happens. It seems like an interesting combination. Maybe you can share a little bit of insight as to what you think we might see in the near future. I sure can, Vance. Actually, so we're very happy to be part of Click now. You know, as you just said, there's a nice synergy between the data integration and delivery. Most folks, even when we were at Unity, were, you know, what do I do with that data once it's delivered? And a lot of the folks were using it for reporting and analytics. And it's real nice that we've now got a parent that consume a lot of the data that we integrate. And Click has a ton of interesting technology to deliver an independent platform to raw data to rapid insights. Really, the statement of direction I'd like to point you to, there's a really nice document that a bunch of folks have spent a whole bunch of time on articulating the combined vision for essentially Click's two businesses, right? The business of data and the business of analytics and how those two businesses will work together. So I go read the statement of direction. Fantastic. Fantastic. And just kind of putting the dots together, Clive, as you've presented what Attunity brings to Click, it's like this two pivots you talked about, the batch to real time and then the more and more attention to automation, which of course for an end user would mean, okay, less rules to mess up and faster access. It just seems like a very smart pipeline model that's starting to emerge here. That's what we're hoping and capitalizing on that data ops movement. So you've got it absolutely right, Vance. 
fantastic, fantastic. So, Clive, one last thing, real quickly. You mentioned the trial of the Sandbox a couple times. Let's refresh people's memory. We've got a little link to it right below the view screen here. But give us a sense of once they click on it, what will they get and what do they need to maybe know to begin to populate data or do they use sample data sets? What actually happens? Yes, so it actually creates a whole hosted environment in the cloud that is all pre-configured. One of the things we found, even in the sort of good old days when you had to download the trial, right? You used to download something and I had to find test data and I had to install the software and I had to make sure that my databases were up and working. You don't have to do any of that. Everything that you would need to trial this software, how you would use it in your environment is pre-configured, ready to go, fully documented with a fantastic tutorial. Just go away and try it for yourself. That's all I can say. It's a really nice offering. Fantastic. Fantastic. Clive Bierman, Director of Product Marketing for Data Integration at Attunity, now a division of Click. Thanks very much for a great session. A really terrific demo. It really puts some real visualization behind what's going on at Attunity slash Click right now. And we loved your question. Thanks again. Thanks, Vance. And as we love to do here at the Cloud Architecture Summit, just a quick refresher. We've got some other links here. We talked about the slides you can get in this demo, in this trial that Clive mentioned, but we've also got some other assets, including that statement of direction that Clive referred to about the future that Attunity and Click are cooking up back at the office. So I recommend that you take a look at that. Again, they're all available for you without registration. Just click them and they're yours. And as you can see, a lot going on there at Attunity now that they're a member of Click. We couldn't fit everything here here in the room. So here's a slide that'll take you some other assets. Download the slides and these links will be live. Thanks again, everyone.